Yeah, it's coming all the way out. So our first component is gonna be the Lee Time 2000 watt inverter. This is a pure sine wave inverter. It outputs around 115 volts AC. Claims to have 4,000 watts worth of surge. And I've tested it. It does start my one horsepower sprinkler pump. So I know it has a decent amount of surge for an inverter this size. So if you look at the right hand side, you're gonna see it has two AC outlets, 15 amp outlets like you'd have in your house. It also has a display. We'll have to look at that and see what information it has. I don't quite remember. And then it has the on off button on this side as well. Now this does have, I think it said the self consumption on this was less than nine watts. Um, we can test that and find out, but that's very low power consumption if you accidentally end up leaving this on. And it runs off of a 12 volt battery. So it could run off of pretty much any 12 volt battery you could use to run this inverter, like any car size battery. So I think I'm gonna mount this inverter near the top of the enclosure. And then as we wire this up, we'll try to keep all our 12 volt wiring along this side. We'll try to keep all of our AC 120 volt wiring along this side of the enclosure. And we'll keep our voltages somewhat separated in here. So our next component is the Lee Time 60 amp MPPT charge controller. And this can be used on all different types of systems. So it works on 12 volts, 24 volts, 36 volts, and 48 volts. So it's kind of an all-in-one charge controller. You can hook up for 12 volts. What we're gonna be using for is the max of 900 watts that you can hook to it, maximum voltage of 150 volts on your solar panels. So if you want to use this on a 48 volt battery bank, this can accept up to 3,200 watts worth of solar. And if you have a 48 volt battery that has communication, this does have RS-485 communication to be able to talk back and forth with a battery. And then it also has a temperature sensor that is included so it can monitor the temperature of the battery bank. So this charge controller, it's a beast. I think it's probably around four inches thick. It has like a two inch deep heat sink on the back of it. It does have a screen where you can go through and you can set it up uh, for the battery types and the voltages and everything. It's real easy to be able to work through the menu. So for the charge controller, I think I'm just gonna put it here at the bottom on the left hand side. So for the charge controller, it had little mounting feet that you could add to it and it gets the holes off to the side. It lifts it up just a little bit. So I went ahead and I put those on. All right, I've got the terminal block wired up. So I've got hot, neutral and ground on the terminal block. And then I started putting some of these zip tie mounting points on here. They just screw to the back plane. So I've got one right here. It's holding this wire in place. I've got them going along the bottom and then I've got them going along the side over here and that's gonna just allow us, as we wire this up, we can zip tie everything down, make sure it's nice and neat. So I've built out the back plane as far as I wanna go for now. I wanna move back to the enclosure. I've got a battery disconnect that's gonna go on the side. We're gonna use it to turn it on and off the battery power to the inverter. And then I need to get an outlet mounted to the enclosure as well. And then we've got all of our cable penetrations we need to make. So the enclosure is all wired up now and it is ready to power up and test. And I want to take you in here. I want to go through the wiring, show you how I wired it up, how everything is routed. So out of the bottom of the enclosure, we have two solar panel cables with MC4 connectors on it, ready to connect to some solar panels. Those route up right into the solar panel input on the charge controller. And on the left hand side, we have the negative and the positive battery cable. And I've got about four and a half feet of it running out the bottom to be able to reach a battery. So my positive battery cable comes up, hits one side of our disconnect, and then it is doubled up with the positive off of the charge controller. So that means when this switch is off, the charge controller can still charge the battery. So the charge controller is on all the time. And then the disconnect, when you turn it on, it provides power up to the inverter and it comes on. So really this disconnect switch is just an on off for the inverter. So the negative battery cable goes straight up to the inverter and then it is doubled up with the negative from the charge controller. So from our terminal blocks, we have power coming out to the outlet on the side of the cabinet. And then we have power going through our thermostat 
and then up to the fan and then back down to the neutral. And you can see we still have open terminal blocks here so we can wire more power out of the enclosure to other things if we want to. Makes it a lot easier with those keyhole slots to mount it. Just reaches. All right, shows that we got solar going into the batteries. It's putting in 12.4 amps of solar right now. Then it says the solar panels are 63.5 volts. 12.6 amps times 63.3 volts, 797 and a half watts. So I've got 800 watts of solar panels hooked up to the charge controller, it's charging the battery, everything seems to be working fine. So we'll go ahead now and um, we'll go ahead and hook it up to the sprinkler pump and we'll test this out. So with this outlet mounted on the side, it just makes this plug and play. You can just take it and use it anywhere but you can still hardwire stuff to the inside if you want. So I think this is gonna work out good. So go ahead and turn on the inverter. You could hear it beep. And when we kick on the sprinkler pump, it's gonna spray like 20 feet outside this garden. This thing's gonna get completely soaked with water. Luckily it's rainproof. We're gonna let the sprinkler probably run for an hour and then we'll come back and we'll check this. We'll see if we got any water on the inside. All right, here we go. It's a little slow starting it up, but it started it. Yeah, it's coming all the way out. Almost hit the camera with the water. Yeah, you can see the water and how far it shoots over the garden. It shoots pretty far. <laughs> 